Good morning, Lord. I'm sorry I haven't come to you because of my unbelief, and I got in a spiral of confusion, a fear of being misled after getting the ram of beguiling spirits. Jesus responded, Well, beloved, that is why I gave you the rhema card. The new blessings and instructions are coming your way, so they were sent to detour you and bring confusion, so that you wouldn't come to me. They use fear to keep you away from me. Oh, my little one, don't let them steal from you again. Come and keep coming. If you ask for bread, will I give you a snake? No, Lord. When I'm walking in pride, I may pick up a snake thinking it's bread. Just saying. <laughs> Jesus laughed. That is very true. But I'm faithful to always steer you back to safety. So come and listen for my voice. I'm sorry this time surrounding the miracle that has taken place has been less than joyous for you. You know it doesn't have to be. Oh, Lord, it's true. I thought you'd play more uplifting songs, one of celebration, etc. But if fed into my fears of hearing the songs of battle and spiritual warfare and trials, I was like, sheesh, I didn't know what to think. And then again, the Rama yesterday, this third would be tried in the fire. I thought, really, Lord, again? I just got that last month. Oh, Lord, is there ever a break? That is a silly question, huh? Yes, it is, beloved, he said, smiling. You're created to dance in the fire. Your fires will only continue to increase, but you will get through them more and more with ease. This last trial wasn't as bad as you thought, looking back. Very true, Lord. It seems like another trial, not a fiery one, because my fiery trials used to be excruciating, painful, and humiliating. Well, the intensity of the trial didn't go down. You are just walking in more grace, hence the rhema card I gave you to stop complaining. So please stop complaining. It really hurts me when I hear a murmur, a huff, a puff, or a shout of frustration from you, and in your heart about what I've allowed, when I've been so faithful and gracious towards you. Now is the season to celebrate despite whatever goes on around you. Wow, Lord, I'm so humbled. I'm sorry. Lord, I'm back. I want to speak to you about the fiery child coming to the group. I didn't give you the forewarning of your inner circle changing for no reason, beloved. And as an aside, guys, I think in one of the messages, I shared that I got a rhema of a rhema from Lana Vosser saying uh, that um, the Lord is changing inner circles and that there'll be many who start on the journey but won't be able to go with you. And I got it again, like the same day on a different platform. And I was like, whoa, Lord, I guess this is serious, but I haven't really seen any change. And that's been in the back of my mind, what all that is about and what inner circle is he talking about? Because I really don't have that many friends here in Ghana. Jesus continued, This will be for your good and the good of the group. I purify to refine and I refine to mold and expose hearts only to clean them. There's still some who are way too attached to the purse of their own opinions and how things should be done. There's some who struggle with change and can be a bit resistant. And there's some who grumble in their hearts concerning your leadership. And you, my beloved, tend to be a bit more cautious in correcting and instructing because of this. This group was made to be centered around me, with you leading, and your children, these precious ones following, not leading themselves, which happens when they take a decision without your consent. Delegation is very good, but the intention should be made clear always to continue to submit themselves to the direction of leadership. Your group will go through many fiery furnaces in the times to come, and because of it, you must be firm in unity and in obedience to me, as they are in obedience to you. I must start from the heart, not from the lips or signs of faithfulness in ministry. But Lord, you must be very appreciative of those who are faithful and committed. I am beloved, but faithful and committed to who? The roles to ministry or faithful and committed to me and my will. I know this is hard for you to hear, but I look at the heart and many hearts are needing to be pruned for I'm taking them, and what you will all endure in this ministry, or you will not withstand the attacks of the devil when he comes, especially once the community is built. This trial is necessary, and you too, little one, must detach. You've been partial to some and less partial to others. I don't want you doing that as a leader and as a mother. You must see all souls the same, those with noticeable and tangible gifts versus those whose gifts are hidden and even especially to those who your nature easily is drawn to versus those you're not so much inclined to. Ask me for the grace to love and mother all souls the same, and I'll give it to you. Always remember each soul I give you and bring to you is mine first, 
Some souls, their seasons will be done, and you must let them go so that I can move them along in the next lesson of their lives. Do not hold on to one too tightly, and don't always try to fix things right away. When you have done your part, you must let go and allow me to do mine, and leave them in my hands and my mother's heart. For everyone who would leave or be redirected, I will send another to be taught, raised up, trained, and delegated in responsibility. See the City of God community as training grounds, while I raise many with the spirit of Elijah. It will be a revolving door when one is trained and sent out, but you will always be tied in the spirit. When a soul doesn't yield to your counsel or suggestion or correction, leave them to me. And that was the end of Jesus' message.